guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I thought I'd just share a quick tip on how you can use children particles in your destruction simulations in order to populate them with a lot more small scale debris if your computer is lagging while you crank up the number of particles in your scene. In the dome destruction visual effects breakdown that I uploaded, some of you commented that it was fairly obvious that I used children particles to create that small scale debris in the simulation. And I totally agree with this, which is why children particles should generally only be used when your computer simply can't handle adding more normal particles to your particle simulation. If you don't know what children particles are, this video should help explain that. But essentially what they are is duplicate particles around your original particles in your particle simulation to add more particles to your scene based on the original movement of your particle system. Anyways guys, if that doesn't make sense, this quick tip tutorial should clarify everything. So let's get started. Here we are inside a blender. This is going to be the starting point of this tutorial. As you can see here, I just have this basic building here and uh, I fractured a corner of it here utilizing some chaos destruction tools and the self fracture add on here and I will make a full tutorial on how to fracture and destroy this building in the near future as well but essentially what we have is uh, you know basic rigid body simulation here I have constrained some of these top portions of the fracture part of the building here with uh, seven different constraints so I've constrained both the top part of the fractured portion of the building to the passive part of the building here as well and then I've also constrained some of these smaller particles together to give a mixture of small and large uh, rigid body debris. So you can see, for example, right here, all of these rigid bodies are constrained together as well as, you know, some right here and over here as well. So a pretty simple rigid body simulation. This guy is just an active animated rigid body, which we've added through our button right here. And this is a pretty common way that I destroy objects. Just simply fracture it, give it some constraints, and then animate a rigid body going through it. So anyways, this is our starting point here. Now what we want to do is add some smaller scale particle debris to make the destruction a little bit more more beefy and realistic. So what I'm going to do here is uh, find the point in which the icosphere hits the uh, fractured part of our building here. So I think right about here is when we want those small scale debris particles to blast out from the rest of the rigid bodies. So what I'm going to do, we could just, uh, you know, select this entire group here and add small scale debris through our debris systems here in our chaos tab. However, instead of uh, adding our small scale debris to all of our objects here, what I want to do is just select some of our rigid bodies right around where the icosphere hits just to be a little bit more precise with it. Um, so I'm just going to start selecting some rigid bodies that I want to add those small scale particles to. Um, you can uh, experiment around with it and if you ever don't like the uh, rigid body that uh, is emitting particles you can always remove that debris system with this button right here. So again we've tried to make this as simple as possible to go backwards throughout your process as well if uh, you don't like your results. This is probably pretty good so mostly I'm just selecting the rigid bodies around where our icosphere hits. So this should be pretty solid. Now what I want to do, now that we're at the point in our timeline where the icosphere hits, is I'm going to select the type of debris that I want to add to these uh, selected rigid bodies. We could use the glass particles, which look really cool. However, there's not a lot of glass in this particular structure here. So probably the more suitable debris field would be the concrete or rebar rocks one, or we could do both actually. But I'm just going to use one of them. I'm just going to use the concrete debris field, and then I'll just click on on add debris. And you might not think that anything has changed, but as you can see here, if we play through our scene once more, you'll notice that we have a bunch of small scale debris being added to our simulation and obviously way too much right now. So what we can do to adjust this is, uh, you know, select one of our rigid bodies that has the particle system on it and we'll go to our particle settings tab and we'll adjust a few of our settings here. So I'm going to bring down the number to maybe 10 and I'll bring down the velocity just for this tutorial to maybe 0.2, just so they're not moving quite as fast. And automatically your small scale debris particles when you use this chaos operator are going to generally follow the same direction as your rigid body simulation. So as you can see here, when we play through our scene, you know, you just have small scale debris being emitted around your main rigid body simulation, which gives it a lot more realistic result. But anyways, now let's get to adding children particles to this simulation. So ideally what you would do is find the right amount of particles using this emission number right here. So say you want to add more small scale debris particles, you could just, you know, crank this number up to 100 and uh, bake this part of the simulation. 
And that's going to give you the most accurate result for these particles because each individual particle is going to be baked according to the physics of the world here. However, if you have a really big particle simulation, increasing this number sometimes slows down your computer to the point where it's really hard to navigate. So that's where children particles can come in handy. So I'll just bring this back down to maybe 10. So now we just have a few different particles being emitted in different parts of our simulation here, which is bringing our simulation together already. But let's say we want to add some more particles and save some memory. I'll just scroll down here to our children tab. I'm going to use the simple children particles. And all of a sudden, right off the bat, you can see what's happening here. Essentially for each given particle, we're having 10 particles displayed in our viewport here. And then we're going to actually render 100 of them. So this amount will be displayed in our viewport as we're seeing it right now and then this amount right here will be rendered. I do like to view it the same way I'm going to render it so I'm just going to keep these both at 20. So I'll make render amount 20 and then I'll make display amount 20 as well. And you can see here exactly what is happening. Obviously right now they are not looking right. We have to adjust a few of our settings. So one of the main things that I want to adjust here when creating these children is uh, just the radius around the main particle. So I might just increase the radius here a bit to uh, you know separate where the children are in the scene a bit more. And another thing you can do is increase the randomness of the size of the particles, which helps a lot with realism. So not everything is the same size. So I'll just randomize the size here all the way to one and already that's looking a little bit better and you can adjust other settings as well you can change the seed number here if you want to just add some randomness to the children so each number will give you a slightly different result given the same parameters here and essentially these are the numbers that I play around with most I haven't really utilized the clumping roughness or kink tabs here but I found that adjusting this main children tab here can help you get some interesting results while not slowing down your simulation too much um, and I'm actually going to bring the display amount down to 10 as well as the render amount because I think we still have too many particles but this is just a nice way you can kind of fill in the gaps of your simulation without cranking up this emission number for each of your particle systems so as you can see here it still looks pretty nice obviously if you look really closely you can see that for example right here that the children particles are exactly following the same path as the particle that they are following however it's just a nice way to save time and still populate your destruction with a lot more debris so obviously you have to keep in mind uh, what your render is going to look like and composite it differently if they are super noticeable in the case of my dome destruction visual effects breakdown I simply wanted a lot of particles in the scene and I couldn't crank up the emission number enough with Without really slowing down my viewport so I thought it was a necessary sacrifice for the shot as adding the children in my opinion definitely helped the final composite more than they hurt it. Anyways guys to bake out your particle simulation as well as your rigid body simulation just select one of the rigid body pieces with the particle system on it and you can just go to the cache tab here under particle properties and you can just click on bake all dynamics and Blender will go through all of the frames in your timeline and uh, you'll have a simulation that you don't have to play through from the beginning the entire time. And here we have it. This is our final result with our children particles. And uh, there are some things we could do to make it better. I think, uh, you know, there's some intersecting on the ground here. But uh, just to show you guys an example of how to use children particles, obviously you can adjust the particle system settings, perhaps add some drag and dampening so that they don't move quite as much after the initial hit. But uh, this is the general concept here. I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to see next on this channel. I will include a link to this parking garage building in the description below. Uh, it's not a super complex building however it is manifold and there's no intersecting geometry so it's a really good building to practice your fracturing and destruction on because 3d models essentially have to be built in a very specific way to be destroyed in the simulation process so i'll put a link to download this structure for free in the description below if you're interested and i will see you in the next video